Welcome back to another day in uh, Mae Sot, Thailand. It's about uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm here at my guest house and I'm heading over to uh, Borderline, my current favorite restaurant for uh, another meal. Um, <laughs> the thing is that uh, last time I was there, I was treated to a meal by uh, Daryl of Wander Eats, uh, the Wander Eats YouTube channel. He phoned in an order for me but I didn't have all of the food he ordered. I had everything except for the uh, spring rolls. And they said they would save the spring roll order for me for my next visit. So I thought I should go back this week. You know, it's Friday today, last day of the, you know, the, the weekdays. And I thought I better go back before they uh, forget about me. You know, <laughs> after, if I wait too long, you know, they'll have no idea who I am. And like, spring rolls, what spring rolls? And I'm wearing my uh, regular blue shirt today instead of my new red one just so that they will recognize me better, you know? They've always seen me in the blue shirt, so uh, I'm gonna wear the blue shirt again today. I'll talk more about my lunch uh, plans in a second, but I was just walking out of the guest house and out of nowhere, for some reason, I noticed an entire part of the guest house that I never saw before. How in the world have I not seen it? I'll flip the GoPro and show you. Up there, there's like a big, rooftop veranda up there and I guess I can be forgiven for not noticing it because to get there you kind of got to work your way through this whole jungle you know to get to the stairs over there you know you can barely see the stairs I, I never saw them before and I never noticed that area up there so I don't even know how uh, one gets there or uh, what's up there <laughs> yeah i assume you know maybe there is nothing up there right now but at one point there were probably uh, lots of tables and chairs i don't think they'll mind if i go uh, take a quick look let's go here's the trail someone said i should be careful of snakes in uh, thailand i never think about snakes but here in this uh, jungle yeah i guess you got to think about snakes to an extent <laughs> it's not easy getting through here. So yeah, here are the stairs. And um, yeah, let's go see what's up here. A secret spot of the green guest house. Man, I guess they haven't used it for a long time. Look at this uh, plant that uh, <laughs> is blocking the entrance. And here we are. So you get a view of the main green guest house uh, buildings. The jungle, snake filled jungle down below. And my room is right down there on the bottom floor of that uh, building there. Another beautiful day. Look at that. Blue skies. And I guess the, uh, this is the kitchen and main office of the guest house and then right below my feet is the uh, kind of the restaurant and here's the road that curves by the front of the guest house huh so yeah it looks like this could have been a very uh, very nice place to hang out i mean they have um a bar you know going all around the edges here so they could have bar stools here and they could serve uh, drinks and food up here hmm maybe uh, it's shut down now just because of the uh, quarantine and lockdowns and travel restrictions they hardly need to open it up just for me you know the one person staying here at the moment all right that was my uh big discovery for the day. Now let's uh, carefully make our way down and uh, head for lunch. I definitely see a lot of uh, lizard creatures running around in, in, in this area, but I haven't seen any snakes as yet. But I guess that's the point. That's what makes snakes dangerous. You uh, don't see them until you uh, step on them and make them mad. <laughs> Yeah, there it is up there. 
the hidden uh, dining area. I never knew it was up there until today. Back to my thoughts about lunch at Borderline. So, assuming they remember me, and my uh, spring roll order is still on the books, I will have spring rolls, and I've been thinking about getting what they call the samosa salad. And that's only because when I was there one time, I was chatting with another foreigner, a guy who uh, has kind of his own NGO that he, that he operates in this area. Very interesting guy to talk with. Um, and he was very interested in video and film production. It's part of his NGO activities. He also he goes into Myanmar, or he used to before the borders closed, and he would work with uh, villages in the Karen district um, near the border here, and would help local people develop kind of an internet presence if they had products that they grew or made in the village or on their farms or in their homes, and they were hoping to market it somehow, and he would help them you know, learn about how they can do this online and uh, do online marketing and things like that. So anyway, very interesting guy. But he saw that I was eating the uh, Sean potato salad and uh, he told me that the samosa salad was also very good. So I'm gonna trust his judgment and I'm going to get the samosa salad along with the spring rolls and for a drink, I think I'm going to get one of their Lassie drinks. Why not? You know, go for something a bit different. Uh, I think they had like a sweet honey Lassie or something like that. And for a third dish, I don't know. We'll wait until I see the menu and uh, put my order together. So yeah, I'm very excited. I mean, all of my videos seem to have been about lunches lately. But uh, hey, you gotta eat lunch, right? That's every day you, uh, well, not every day. <laughs> I don't eat lunch every day. Normal people have lunch every day, but I occasionally have lunch. And if I'm going somewhere special like Borderline, I might as well bring the camera with me. I don't know if I have any uh, updates on the situation here or stories to tell. One thing I wanted to say though, is that based on some of the comments left after my last one or two videos, I might have given the wrong impression about my room at the green guest house. I think I've given the impression with all my talk of uh, geckos, spiders, and ants that the place is like crawling with insects, you know, that there are bugs everywhere on every surface and then coming out of everywhere. And no, that, that is definitely not the case. I mean, there's, I don't know, two, three geckos living in there, uh, the regular ones. And that's standard for any room in uh, Southeast Asia. There are geckos everywhere. Uh, my favorite gecko, the refrigerator gecko. He still comes and goes every day. Uh, yeah, he emerges from under the fridge as the sun starts to go down. And then he runs across the floor, goes out the door to go hunting for the night. And then uh, in the morning, he'll come back again and scoot back to his home under the refrigerator. And there are one or two other geckos that uh, make an appearance. And there's one spider in particular, and I guess he's, I think about him a lot because this spider is the most traveling spider I have ever seen. Like he never stays in one place. He is on the move all day and all night. He just crawls over the entire room. Just as I was leaving today, I went into the bathroom and, you know, brush my teeth. And there he was in the sink, same spider. You know, he was just hanging out in the sink, right? And you just never know where this guy is gonna pop up. So yeah, he's all over the table, all over the bed, all over the walls. He, he's a real jumping spider. It's kind of a, you know, mid-sized one, but he's a real jumper. So if you get anywhere near him, and the geckos were always hunting him, but they could never catch him. Maybe that's why he's on the move all the time. <laughs> he doesn't want to get eaten by a gecko. I understand that. But yeah, you get close to him and boom, you know, he, he flings himself through the air, you know. He, he jumps like the Incredible Hulk. He's got power in his legs. Um, but maybe because this one spider is so mobile and moves around so much, 
He's just sort of given me the impression that the place is filled with spiders. But in reality, there's only one spider. He just, uh, he's just on the move, you know, he's everywhere all the time. <laughs> he never, never stops moving. And then beyond that, we've got ants. You know, there's one colony of ants that just walks across this one part of my wall. And if I happen to uh, spill any food on the table and leave it out, of course, the next time I look, there are going to be ants there, you know, eating that food. But that's normal, you know, there are ants by the kajillions everywhere in the world, right? So, that's all I'm talking about. A couple of geckos, one spider, and if you happen to leave food out, ants find it. So, <laughs> I think I was, I made a joke last time that if all these creatures ganged up on me all at once, you know, they could toss me out of the room. But as a guest staying in this guest house, there, there's no problem with ants <laughs> or geckos or spiders. I don't want to give that impression. It's quite clean and neat and tidy. And there's just the uh, normal number of ants, put it that way. The normal number of geckos and one very energetic uh, spider. So. All right, we're here at the uh, borderline. Time to go in uh, for my lunch and see if they remember me and Wander Eats and um, Spring Rolls and see if there's uh, anybody else here for lunch or is it just me again? I heard voices. But I don't see anybody here. Okay, I think I'm going to uh, sit at this uh, small table over here again in the uh, chill out space. And I, I just uh, made eye contact with the, the women here and they instantly looked at me and said, ah, spring rolls. So yeah, they, they know exactly who I am. No, no worries about that. All right, it's gonna get settled in at the table and um, place the rest of my order. Very exciting. Feels like I haven't been here for a long time. So I'm all settled in at my table. Um, got my reading glasses on so I can read the menu. And check this out, I love this. Being a, a Canadian, put ice in any of my drinks and I'm very happy. Love drinks to be, uh, you know, cold as possible. Oh, so good. Ice water. Okay, um, yeah, looking at the menu. And uh, as I said in, in previous videos, you know, Borderline is quite a special case. It's a bit of an, uh, a collective, an artist's collective. And uh, they have a shop here where they sell handicrafts and they support uh, mainly women, uh, like women refugees from Myanmar that are now living in Thailand. And uh, I think their food and drinks for the most part you know, tends towards the locally sourced, organic, no additives, you know, very health conscious, and they make everything themselves right here, as far as I know. Um, so, I mentioned I wanted to get a special drink, and uh, here's the uh, drinks page. So this is the borderline juice and yogurt menu page, and they say here that our yogurt is made from milk that comes directly from cows around Mesot. That's cool. The only processing is done by ourselves without any additives. Yogurt as it is meant to be. So you've got things like a lemongrass juice, roselle juice. I don't know what that is. Mint juice, lime juice, lime basil juice, ginger juice, banana honey juice. Anything, you put bananas in anything and, and I get very uh, interested. I'm very uh, a simple man that way. <laughs> I end up with banana shakes all the time. I just can't resist them. Seasonal fruit shake. And for something slightly different, we've got a yogurt and honey lassi. And that's what caught my eye for 45 baht. So I think that is what I'm going to have. Yogurt and honey lassi. And um, I'm getting the samosa salad. From the list of salads here, I've had the 
tea leaf salad on a previous visit. And then I've had the Sean potato salad. And uh, yeah, they have five or six more. And today I'm going to have the samosa salad. I really don't know what that means. Um, well, here's a uh, picture of some of their uh, salads. There's the tea leaf salad, the amazing Sean potato salad. I really want to have that again. That was so good. I think that's my favorite meal so far from here. And then this is the uh, samosa salad. So I don't know, like what do they do? Do they make their samosas and then break them up and, and sprinkle them over a bed of salad? This is the actual uh, order form. Teas, coffees, homemade juice, homemade yogurt. So there it is there, yogurt and honey lassi. Let's try that. One of those for one of me. And samosa plate, spring rolls. That's what I'm getting, but I don't have to order it because they already have an order form for that. And uh, yeah, for dessert, I might get like these Burmese tea cakes or an egg roti, something like that. But we'll wait for a while. Burmese salads. And there's the samosa salad, 55 baht. Hmm, feels like kind of an empty order. Just samosa salad and lassi plus the spring rolls. But that's what we're going to do today. Things are happening fast. Um, my spring rolls have already been brought out. Um, they got right on that order as soon as I showed up, so that's cool. And I ordered the uh, samosa salad and the lassi. The, you know, the woman who came to the table with my spring rolls. She is so nice. Um, really, really sweet and friendly. And I asked her, you know, can you make both these items? I still keep assuming that because there are f so few foreigners on the move right now, so few travelers, tourists, that um, they wouldn't be able to make everything on the menu. But she always looks at me with surprise, like, why are you asking? Of course we can make those things. So that's what I ordered. And there they are, the uh, spring rolls. Got uh, five of them with a dish of sauce to go with it. Uh, amazing day today. I love windy days. And got a really uh, pretty strong wind blowing today. Just so nice because it uh, cools everything down so much. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I have the GoPro up on this super high three-way grip again on these spindly little tripod legs. And with the wind, I'm, I'm worried the whole thing is going to topple over. But I have it braced with a book and some other stuff holding it in place, I hope. So, spring rolls. <laughs> so exciting. I'm going to see what this uh, sauce tastes like on its own. Hmm. Hmm. Again, not what I was expecting. I was expecting like a real spicy hit, but it's a little bit lighter than I thought. More sour than spicy, something not unpleasantly sour, but that's kind of the flavor I'm getting. I'm so primitive when it comes to describing food and flavors, but that's what the uh, that's what it's striking me as. I'm gonna go straight for my hands this time. Finger food. Um, then try one of these without the, uh, without the sauce, without the dip. They surprise me every time with how good these meals are. Hmm. So there's uh, kind of <laughs> what it looks like. You know, your spring roll. And then on the inside, corn and vegetables and a whole bunch of other stuff. But what jumped out at me right away was how thin and crispy the outer shell was. And I just sort of bit right through it. It gives it a very, um, I don't want to say delicate texture, but something, I don't know. 
tastes great. I was expecting something much thicker, like a thicker shell and a little bit more sturdy, but this is a very crispy and light. Mmm, so good. Corn, carrots, some uh, chopped, uh, oh, what do you call it? Like some these long green vegetable things. I can't think of their names, but anyway, they're in there, long green things that they've chopped up into little bits. Mmm. And there's something else. I don't know if it's the oil that they cooked it in, that they fried them in. Or something inside in the filling. Is it nutty? Like there's a nutty flavor in there? No, what is that? But after the corn, that's the most dominant flavor, whatever that is, was really good. I like that a lot. Hmm. Maybe I can ask, you know, what the ingredients are. Can you do that in restaurants? Or do they not want to um, share their secrets so their competitors, you know, <laughs> can duplicate their dishes? As always for me, you know, I could easily do without any kind of a dipping sauce, you know, for this. There's so much flavor going on here that I don't really feel the need to add more. To me, it doesn't feel like it's lacking, but that's how it's served. So that's how I'll try it. No, that's okay. I guess it's, um, more a combination of flavors, how well they go together. And the sour kind of light flavor of this dipping sauce does not compete with whatever flavor is going on here. So, no, I like that. It's not bad at all. I just have a problem with it if the side sauces are like super red hot chili based or something and they're so hot, it wipes out your taste buds and then all you can taste is the, you know, the hot chili or something. But that's not what's going on here. Hmm. Hmm. Recommended. Very good. I'm doing the caveman Doug thing again because I'm so hungry. I'm just sort of eating them so fast. And here comes my samosa salad and honey lassi. Can I ask you a question about the spring, the, the spring rolls? Is there something special you add for the flavor? There's something in there that I, I'm trying to identify it, but I don't know what that flavor is. Something to do with nuts or something? <laughs> I, there's a, a flavor in the spring rolls, and I'm not sure what it is. It tastes really good, but is there something uh, special you put in there? We do the tiny masala. Tiny? Tiny masala. Chinese? Masala. spice. Okay. Yeah. Masala? Yes. Yeah. Okay. For the samosa, we do the Indian masala, Indian spice. Okay. Yeah. For this one, Chinese spice. Okay. Masala. masala. You could, I don't know what that is, but it's a Chinese spice. This one we use in some masala. Okay. So in Chinese pie. Oh, masala. Masala. Oh, masala. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's the type of spice, the masala. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. No way. Thank you. I don't know how much of that you heard, but I asked about the, the secret ingredient going into these, and apparently it's masala. I don't even know what that is. I've, I've heard the word before, but I never associated it with a spice. But I guess she says they use Chinese masala, a Chinese spice in the spring rolls, and then in my um, samosa salad, which is here now, they use Indian spices, an Indian masala. Hmm, I'll have to uh, do some more research into that. Hmm. I could have two plates of these without a, without a problem. Yeah, the, the second woman that came out, I guess she's more of the chef, and uh, she was also very friendly, and um, yeah, had a great smile, really, really pleasant, so. That helps a lot, you know, for enjoying having lunch at a place. You know, the people that work there are uh, as nice as the people here are. But that doesn't really surprise me. I'm sure, I'm assuming they're both from Myanmar and the people from Myanmar are just naturally kind of outgoing and personable and friendly and charming, I find. So yeah, I think they're, uh, they're from Myanmar. Mm. Maybe I'll start with a look at the uh, lassi. What is it again? It is a, they call it a yogurt and honey lassi. Oh, it's nice and cold. The cup, yeah, is ice cold on the outside. Love that. And I guess the honey comes uh, separately. And I assume you pour it in and stir it up. Mm, I want to have some of this right away while it's still cold. Yeah, there's a little bit of ice in there, not, not a huge amount. Let's try a spoonful of this and see what it tastes like without the honey. Lassi. Nice. Mm. I'm saying everything is nice and delicious and good, you know, and it's not just because I'm eating here. <laughs> it really is good. And I guess when I say nice, it kind of means that the flavor is a bit light because I don't generally like really overpowering and strong flavors. So that's kind of a insight into my palate. And if this was like hitting me like powerful yogurt, like mm, so sour and really strong. I may not like it as much though. That might be what you would prefer. This has a kind of a light yogurty uh, thing going on. Yeah, in terms of the sourness of it, you don't need to add sweetener, I don't think. But since we have the uh, honey, that's the way it's uh, supposed to be uh, consumed. So let's add the honey. Here we go. This ought to be quite, look at, look at how much honey. I mean, that is a lot of honey. <laughs> They're not messing around. Actually, what am I doing? Got to taste the honey on its own first, right? Of course. Let's get some. Oh, look at that. Got some oop, oop, honey on a spoon. Hmm. Nice, yeah, like very light honey, not uh, overpoweringly sweet either. Again, I wonder where the honey comes from. Do they have their own bees here? <laughs> I don't know. All right, now, uh, yeah, let's pour that honey into the uh, lassi. Let's make this a very sensual pour. Oh, you can see a lot of the uh, the honey so heavy just sunk down all the way to the bottom so we got to give this a good stir I 
I wonder if it will really mix though, because this Lassie is very frothy, you know, it's not a thick liquid. So I don't even know if it can hold the honey. Let's just, yeah, let's give it a real strong stir. Let's see if we can get it all mixed together. And if not, we can get a nice sweet hit of honey at the bottom when we're uh, almost done. Okay. All right. Lassi. Honey yogurt lassi. Hmm, interesting. The honey doesn't seem to have made a big difference to the flavor. Like, it's, I'm not tasting the sweetness. Maybe it takes a little bit of the edge off the uh, yogurty side of things, but I don't know. Hmm, it's very good though. Mm. Just like with everything here, I really have to pace myself. Um, I'm so hungry and, and kind of thirsty right now, so I could just put this whole thing back right away. But I'm going to uh, take it slow and uh, enjoy it as much as possible. Mm. Okay, there. A bit deeper down, I got a real shot of honey there. Nice. Good thing to order today. On to the uh, samosa salad. Close-up look. So there it is, the samosa salad. So I think it is kind of like what I thought. I mean, they make very good samosas here. You can order a samosa plate. So I think they've taken some samosas, you know, that they would have served on a regular side order and cut them up and added them to this uh, salad, which, um, yeah, what's all in there? A lot of cabbage and I'm not sure what all is in, in this salad. Get a little bit of greens here, but not much. So it's mainly cabbage and, and other things kind of cut up and shredded along with the uh, samosas. Let's try a uh, spoonful. Samosa salad. Hmm. Very good. Again, I'm at a loss. There is a, another flavor <laughs> going on here and I don't know what the flavor is. Yeah, because I'm sure they made kind of a special sauce for this. Another big uh, spoonful with some samosa and some diced cabbage or shredded cabbage or something. Very good. Again, I want to say something nutty, like there's a nutty flavor in there somehow. And then you get these uh, big pieces of uh, cut up samosas. Mm, mm, mm. Very, very good. But there is that flavor that's eluding me. There's something going on here, something special. Mm. All right, time to get back to my uh, whole meal. Hmm. Once more, you can gauge the level of my hunger by the speed <laughs> of my spoonfuls and the size of my spoonfuls. That's, that's a big spoonful of um, samosa salad. And I am thinking that this is a good amount for lunch. I could probably have had a third dish, but then I don't think I would have appreciated it as much. You know, better to focus on two and an interesting drink. <clears throat> that is more than enough flavor for me for uh, one lunch. Mm. There's a lot of flavor going on here. 
All right. I'm going to uh, settle in and enjoy the lunch, turn off the camera for a minute, and I'll check back with you when uh, the meal is nearly all done or all done. We'll see. Lunch is finished. Nothing but empty plates on this table and empty glasses. So, yeah, it was a good lunch. Very good lunch. The winner for me here was the, uh, the spring rolls. Those were very good. Um, so I had the samosa plate before. Those were good. And the spring rolls, perhaps even a little bit better. Just a little bit lighter in flavor, maybe. Yeah, they were quite good. Both of them are great. Samosas and uh, the spring rolls. And my uh, yogurt honey lassi was also very good all the way to the bottom. I had no, uh, no, no, no issues finishing that at all. I don't have a lot of uh, pressing topics on my mind today, but I do have a new quest, a new uh, shopping quest to keep me entertained. <laughs> this is something that pops up, I don't know, once a year maybe? I haven't kept track of this, so I'm not sure how long it off, how, how often it happens, but I like these cheap digital Casio watches, you know? I like them because they just tell me the time and they're waterproof and that's all I need from a watch. But the thing about these watches is that I never take them off. I mean, I just leave them on 24 hours a day. So every time I take a shower, every time I wash my hands, every time I'm out in the sun, whatever I'm doing, this watch is being exposed to the water and to the sun and to everything else. and. The watch, the watch itself can last forever. I mean, these things are practically indestructible, but the band, this rubber, gets very brittle in this uh, climate and uh, they break. And as you see, once again, the, the strap broke. And that happens all the time. As I said, I don't know whether it happens once every eight months, once a year, once every four months. It's not that frequent but it does happen regularly enough that I seem to always be looking for one of those little uh, roadside shops that can put a new band, a new wristband on this Casio. So that is my latest quest as I walk around uh, Mesot, running my errands and exploring. I'll be looking for any little shop that sells, you know, cheap, rubber wristbands for Casio watches. And I remember seeing one, you know, I saw one here and I made a mental note of where it was, but I guess I made my mental note in uh, disappearing ink because I forgotten where it was. But I'm sure I'll uh, come across one of these shops eventually. And that's my newest quest, a wristband for my Casio watch. <laughs> we'll see how long it takes me to track one down. Almost back at the guest house. I might head out to uh, get some water from the uh, vending machine. I've uh, learned lately that the vending machine isn't always on. I've gone out there a couple of times and been burned. I bring my water bottles all the way over there and then uh, for whatever reason the machine is not running. Whether, you know, it needs to be cleaned or the filters replaced or something, I don't know. But uh, it's not always uh, available when I want it to be. But anyway, uh, I might head out and get some water. But I think uh, I will end the video here. And I hope you enjoyed that lunch once again. Uh, enjoyed watching me have my lunch as much as I enjoyed uh, eating it. And I'll see you again in the next video with more small adventures from uh, Mesot, Thailand. I don't think you'll be able to see him, but there's my buddy, the spider. I just went to uh, turn on the light and uh, he was down here at the uh, bottom, just by the plug there. <laughs> As I said, when I left to go to lunch, he was in the sink in the bathroom and now he's out here. So that's a pretty long journey for a spider. And I think if we get uh, close to him, yeah. oh no, he's pretty comfortable. 
just hanging out there. I don't think he would be in focus. But whatever he's doing, hunting, looking for a new place to live, he is one rambling spider. He, uh, he needs his own backpack, this spider. One last note before I uh, officially, officially end the video. I just got back to my guest house and right now I don't have any data on my phone. So I had no internet connection until I got in range of uh, Wi-Fi. And as soon as I got here, my phone beeped at me and I got an email and I looked at the uh, title of the email on the front of my phone, you know, like on the notification, notification screen. And I went, oh, for Pete's sake, I thought, just leave me alone, will you? Because it looked like it was another one of those scam phishing emails. I get so many of those and it drives me up the wall. I actually, the other day when I was walking around Mesot, I recorded like a 20 minute rant about all the scams that go on these days online. Um, that, that particular rant was kicked off because there was a story that people had set up a duplicate Thai Chana website. You know, the Thai Chana website is the one, oh, I'm sweating into my eyes. Um, it's stinging my eyes. The uh, Thai Chana website is the one that the QR codes take you to when you register at the shopping mall, for example, you know, because of all of the, you know, quarantine measures and everything. And I guess some scam artists set up fake QR codes that take you to a fake Thai Chana website. And then of course they do something to your phone or they scam you or steal money from you. And I thought, man, there's nothing sacred. You know, I hate these scam artists more than almost anybody on the planet. You know, the people that do these things. Anyway, I get an unbelievable number of these emails all the time telling me that, you know, my Amazon order has been completed. But if this is not, if you did not, you know, make this transaction, please click here in order to cancel or do this or, oh, your account has been compromised and we had to uh, shut it down to unlock your account. Please go here and click on these links. You know, I just get an avalanche of these and they drive me crazy because I know they're fake for the most part. I, I know they're fake, but I get a little bit of adrenaline jolt, a little bit of panic every time I get one of these because, I mean, I have been the victim of credit card fraud and who knows what someone could have done. We have so many things online, you know, everything from my YouTube account to, you know, my email accounts to banking to booking.com to a go, I mean, I have, probably a hundred online accounts and every one of them is vulnerable to some kind of hacking, right? So I worry about it. And every time I get one of these emails, I get this little jolt of panic, you know, and it's like, but then of course you look carefully at it and you can tell that it's fake pretty easily. And then, um, of course I never click on any of the links. I never do anything like that, but they still bug me. So when I got back from lunch and I got another one, and I was so annoyed. It was something from, you know, your transaction has been completed through net banks or something like that. And I thought, oh, for Pete's sake, not another one of these. But anyway, I went into my email account, you know, just to look at this email to see whether it really was someone had ripped me off somehow, gotten into my, you know, bank, bank accounts or not. And then I started looking at this email and I started to worry a little bit because it looked real. I mean, it had my real name. It had all the details correct. Every, all the English was perfect. It was grammatical. And I thought, oh, oh this, looks, this looks legit. And then I started reading it and I discovered that it is legit. And in fact, this NetBanks is the service that the Canadian government uses to process your credit card payment for a new passport. So that's what this is. In or, as part of my application, I had to fill out a credit card authorization form. Since I'm not there in person, I had to give them permission to charge the $260 fee to my credit card in order to get my new passport. And that's what this was. My payment had gone through. But of course, <laughs> that's good news in the sense that the payment worked. So that's one hurdle you know, I got over, but at the same time, it doesn't mean everything is done yet because when you scroll down deeper into the email, it then says, 
something like in, in official bureaucratic language, the fact that we have processed payment and we now have your $260, that does not mean you are getting a new, fat, new passport. Not yet. This only means the payment has been approved. And we have your money, and we're going to keep your money, and we may or may not give you a new passport. We're still, we're still thinking about that, and uh, we're still investigating you. So don't get your hopes up. But at least the payment went through. So, <laughs> so for once, a, uh, a phishing scam email about a payment turned out to be a real payment. So we'll see how long it takes from this point until my uh, passport shows up at my door. Now the video is done.